So unlike maybe some previous elections, uh, healthcare really hasn't been uh, a, a, a wedge issue, a divisive issue in this uh, election campaign so far. Certainly the Liberals have taken some hits for uh, hallway medicine and uh, wait times, but really we haven't seen uh, one party sort of take health care and run with it. You agree? Uh, I fully agree. It, generally speaking, health care doesn't really pop up as a major issue unless there's, unless there's significant dissatisfaction with the health care system uh, and it's clear that there is, people want to go in a different direction. In this case, all three parties have put forward very similar platforms as it relates to health care. And as a result, it's very hard to differentiate between the three parties. It is. And I, I've seen on polling data that when people are asked, what's on your mind? Uh, Health care shows up uh, near the top of the list, along with you know jobs and the economy and, and other issues. But it, so far, at least as we round into, we're heading near the end of May for June 7th election, uh, we haven't seen really one party gain advantage on the health care file, nor have we seen any of the parties really lose momentum or support uh, because of health care. So let's talk a little bit about what each of the parties has on offer. And of course, at the time that we're sitting down talking about it, we haven't seen a liberal platform yet. We're told that there is one coming. Uh, but we did have a budget in, uh, that was tabled at the end of March right. and uh, passed uh, at the beginning of May, just before the legislature uh, dissolved for the election period. So why don't we start by talking a little bit about what was in that budget and what the Liberals have on offer mm -hmm. uh, for the people of Ontario as uh, they think about who to vote for. So yeah. we've certainly seen lots about pharmacare and dental care and mental health and why don't you just uh, take a minute and share with our viewers what uh, what was in that budget and in the, the Liberal plan. Yeah, I mean I think the first, the first aspect of the plan was really to deal with the issue around hallway medicine. I think the Liberals anticipated over the last past uh, few months, especially with respect to the questioning from the NDP in the legislature, mm -hmm. that hallway medicine and this question of it is uh, was going to be uh, a top of mind issue. Um, and it's also very visible. It's, it's the kind of it's the kind of uh, it's the kind of thing where when people think of their healthcare system, they look around uh, at the they, they look at uh, the experience that they had in the emergency room. In terms of the, if they see people in hallways, they, they notice that there's, uh, if they're uh, getting care in hallways, they feel that there might be something off. Uh, so the Liberals invested about, uh, decided to invest $822 million in our hospital system, which is a bit of a, a bit of a change in direction. And that's not operating funding. Uh, operating funding, but it also includes uh, increased procedures as well to right. reduce wait times. And it is a different. It is a. It is a different uh, direction in many ways because for the past many years, the uh, hospital budgets have essentially been flatlined, and that has caused some strains at, at, uh, within hospitals. So uh, the equivalent of 4.6 percent increase for hospitals was was uh, a big part of their plan. Uh, they also announced uh, pharmacare uh, for seniors. So they they introduced OHIP Plus for those who are uh, 25 years of age and under. Uh, no copay uh, for uh, and no deductibles for a, a list of drugs of about 4,400 drugs on the formulary, um, and they decide to extend that to seniors who currently pay the copay. So it was another part of their plan. Uh, the other piece was, of course, was a, a historic investment, I guess you could say, in in uh, mental health. Uh, the idea of expanding Medicare to also include more mental health care services, mm -hmm. which was which all parties agree uh, is generally lacking. The Liberals went further than most. Uh, by committing about $2.1 billion over four years, whereas the other parties have committed uh, a similar amount but over a longer period of time. Uh, those are the main, cru that's the main crux. Uh, also, the, uh, w very similar amongst all the parties is, is investments in long-term care and home care, uh, things that generally speaking, um, everyone would agree with. Thousands more long-term care beds. Of course, we were around in 1995 when the Harris government uh, announced 20,000 new beds, so taking the province's inventory from about 55,000 beds to about 75,000 beds. Those took a number of years to build out, yep. and now we're finding that uh, there is certainly a demand for more beds. And so it's really not a surprise that all three parties are talking about adding thousands of long-term care beds. I think with the, the fundamental difference is how many and over what period of time. Right. How quickly can you build them? Right. And I think that uh, Generally speaking, when, you, when one thinks about hallway medicine, the, the conversation has really come to the fact that there are people who are in hospitals who are occupying beds who, don't, who can be served in other places, such as long-term care homes, but there's not enough long-term care home capacity at the moment. 
So it's viewed, generally speaking, and it generally seems to be accepted, that uh, expanding capacity in long-term care homes is, uh, is, the, is one way of dealing with hallway medicine, and that's one of the reasons why all three parties have committed, it, uh, committed to it, whereas the, ND, and the NDP and, and PCs have actually decided, uh, uh, are, are promising to accelerate that. Okay, and of course the Liberals who have, they have spent a lot of money on infrastructure. There are some references in there to more billions of dollars for hospital infrastructure, and certainly uh, Humber River Regional has a brand new hospital. There's a new one under construction in Vaughan. I think there's a new one in Oakville. There, there's new hospitals around, and they've indicated that they would continue that, I think. Right, uh, over 10 years, uh, $19 billion uh, is the figure that they, that they used, uh, which the NDP generally echoed. Um, it's, it's it, again, about expanding capacity within hospitals, um, modernizing hospitals, making them more efficient, and allowing uh, hospitals to operate much more effectively with more beds as well right. uh, okay. in order to deal with all the medicine. So I guess the, the thinking is that there are ALC patients, al alternative level of care patients that are bed blockers that could be not in a hospital but don't have somewhere else to go. That causes the beds to be occupied, which means that people that come in through the emergency room and need to be hospitalized, don't have access to beds, they end up in a hallway. Right. So there's a bit of a, a bottleneck there, the thinking being if we expand home care, if we expand long-term care, that those ALC patients have somewhere a more appropriate setting to go, right. freeing up inpatient hospital beds. Early in the campaign, the Premier, Kathleen Wynne, talked about hiring 3,500 nurses. I don't know that that was in the budget, or is that something that they came out with during the election? Um, I'm, it's something that came out, I believe, uh, during the election. It wasn't directly mentioned in the budget. Um, generally speaking, nurses and nurses associations, they come out with um, uh, their asks for the campaign. Uh, in the case of, in the case of um, Ontario Nurses Association, Registered Nurses Associ uh, Association of Ontario, they're asking for uh, a commitment for a certain amount of nurses to be funded. So the NDP uh, put out a figure, uh, the Liberals are, are putting out a figure, and these are not... Uh, these are, these are, these are, this is part of the solution to hallway medicine. Opening new beds requires new additional nurses. Opening new long-term care beds requires uh, some degree of nurse, nursing support as well. Um, so all of that gets calculated and, and, and you end up with a figure that uh, translates to a certain amount of nurses. Okay, and last, last uh, point on the Liberal plan, because all three parties now, certainly this is the first election that I can recall, where all three parties are talking about government-funded dental care. So for our viewers, there are programs in place, say for children from low-income families, it's called the Healthy Smiles Program, uh, where dentists in their offices, largely, uh, provide dental care for uh, children from low-income families and the government pays for it. Uh, that's a program that's been around for a while, uh, but now all three parties are talking about more uh, involvement uh, in the provision of dental care. Right. So what did the Liberals say about that? And then we'll, we'll switch over to the PCs. Uh, so the Liberals decided uh, that for those who don't currently, uh, for anyone who pays out of pocket for dental services and for drugs, so this covers the, the, uh, the folks between the ages of 25 uh, and 65 for, for drugs, but for anybody who has out of pocket covered, uh, they, they have out of pocket expenses for dental care, so if you don't have a benefits plan, let's say. Yeah, or, or, or even potentially, and that's why the, the, de the details aren't working, if the co-payment associated with it, potentially they might cover as well, uh, if it, that gets to a certain point. Uh, so $700 for a family of four, um, it would be covered per year. Uh, many, uh, some would uh, argue that that's, that's enough to cover for uh, certain dental procedures such as cleanings. Uh, others such as the NDP and, and might, might say that that's not enough. So they've got a different approach, but the approach that the Liberals are taking are essentially reimbursing costs that you've expended uh, up to a certain maximum.